So if the radio goes off and you hear that you are about to get a 284-year-old in full arrest, be honest, we got this. Because for many of us in EMS or on the hospital side, this is what we do every single day. Now the difference, as you can imagine, is if you hear you're not getting a 284-year-old, but instead you're getting a three-month-old who's in full arrest. As you can imagine, that's a completely different story. And for most of us, if all we hear is a couple-minute ETA with a couple-month-old in full arrest, our instincts tend to be something like this. So when it comes to sick kids, you know that at the end of the day, there's got to be a better way. Dr. Ben, I need you right now. Six month baby boy respiratory right. distress. Abby? Just hold on one second. Just one of three course crackles bilateral. Pulse ox is only 75. Sounds like pneumonia. Now let's get a pediatric intubation tray moved now, people. We got a line. I'll draw a CPC and blood culture. Damn, I don't even do pediatric intubations. Where's Cleo? She took a kid to pick you. Get her down here now. What size two? We use two and a half on delivery. No, I think I need something bigger. Uh, uh, three. Three and a half? I don't know. Got the labs. Uh, he's clamped down. I can't get the blade in. It's paralyzing. What's the dose? We need his weight. He's vomiting. Suction. Pulse ox is dropping. What do we have? Uh, difficult intubation. I, I can't dose him without a weight. That's what the bras little tape is for. Okay, we're in the red zone. 2.6 of etomidate, 18 of sucks. Premedicate with 0.17 of atropine, 14 of lido. Bag and keep some correct blood pressure. I couldn't see the cords. That's because you had the wrong blade and the wrong tube. Thanks for coming down. Drugs are on board. Okay, here we go. Dr. Ben. Hold on, hold on. Okay. I'm in. Bag him. Dr. Ben, do you want to close the paramedic traffic? So when it comes to sick kids, unless you've been in EMS, the ER, or pediatrics for more than 30 years, we've actually not known life without the Braslow tape. Because in 2016, it was actually the 30th anniversary of the introduction of Braslow. So for 30 plus years, we've had Braslow Luton and the various toys that come with their system. However, within the last couple of years, a new player on the market comes from Peter and Tevi, a PCR doc from South Florida, whereas he has introduced the hand Tevi system. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! And when you compare Braslow versus hand Tevi, the most important thing to remember is they're exactly the same colors. They're exactly the same length. Meaning if your medics have one and your ER has another, that's okay. You can flip between the two with no worries whatsoever. And when it comes to both tapes, if you want to avoid the most common error associated with the tape, what you need to remember is simply at one end of the tape, you have a big red arrow. And if you remember nothing else, red goes towards the head. And you measure from the head down to their heels, not their toes. That's important. Because if the little girl decides to play Angelina Ballerina and point her toes, it'll bump you up into a different color zone. But if you put red to the head and head to the heels, you're set. Now the difference is when you look at the hand heavy tape, the hand heavy tape at one end has a big red arrow, but also next to the tape, it also specifically says start here at the child's head, cluing you in that that's where you should begin to go ahead and measure from. So when it comes to children though, remember that, especially if the kid is sick, that everything, whether it's drugs or fluids or defibrillation, is something per kilo. And in kids, we're honestly kind of lost until we can actually get a weight. Because everything, with few exceptions, is based on how much more gas does the kid weigh. 
So with that in mind, the Braslow tape, you remember, gives you a couple pieces of information. The first of which is what color the kid is. The second of which is, once you've figured out what color the child is, at the bottom of one side of the tape, it also reminds you that if you have a child who measures out from head to heel to be a yellow, on one side of the tape at the bottom, it also reminds you that Morgus, a yellow colored child, should be Morgus 12 kilos. Now the difference is when it comes to Hentevi. Now, Antevi, by training, is a pediatric ER doc, but he's also an EMS medical director. And he found that in his systems in South Florida, that when it came to kids, that 95% of the time, that somebody knew how old this kid was. And he said the time for my medics to figure out what size tube and how much epi is not when they roll up on scene and understandably frantic parent says, here. He said, you know what, there's got to be a better way, and you ought to be able to figure out stuff before you arrive on scene. So whereas Braslow does color by length, and Tevi, you remember, does color by age. And the theory being is that if all you know is you get toned out or you're getting into the ER a two-year-old, that if all you hear is two-year-old, you can click or flip the two-year-old, and all of the calculations have already been done for you. So with that, on hand heavy tape, the difference when you're trying to find the weights is on the one end of the tape, where it says with big red arrow, start here at the child's head. You also find in that same area a cute little colored chart, and it says if you have a two-year-old. A two-year-old is a yellow exactly like Braslow. And if you look underneath the yellow box, it says that a two-year-old more or less ought to weigh 12 kilos exactly like Braslow. But the difference is when you play with the hand heavy tape, most people's initial reaction when they took a look at it is they say, wait a minute. There's no medical information on this thing whatsoever. And that's completely true. And the rationale is that and heavy will show you the only time he wants you to whip out that tape out of your jump bag or the crash cart is if nobody knows how old this kid is. He's like, if anybody knows how old this kid is, either A, just flip open the book, or B, whip out your phone and click on the app. And again, click on two-year-old or flip to two-year-old. And all of the math has already been done for you. So now, with both systems, in the second part of this video, we'll go through three real-life scenarios. And we'll show you how these systems actually work. Because at the end of the day, both of them work really well for sick kids. But kind of like when you're learning a new language, sometimes you need a bit of a Rosetta Stone to try to go ahead and translate the tapes. Case in point, when I first started playing with transport 20 something years ago, I was taught that all you needed to remember in a crisis was called R&R. &R. And R&R &R meant you had resus on one side and RSI on the other. And that worked really well for years. However, a little while back, a medic in one of our courses said, you know what, that's good. But honestly, he's like, for many of us, here's what's better. He's like, don't go R&R. &R. He said, if you're going to play with the Braslow tape, he said, go E&E. E&E &E. E &E means you have epi on one side and equipment on the other. And he's like, if you're in the back of the rig of the ER with a kid who's actively trying to die, he said, all you really care about at that moment is what size tube and how much epi. He's like, you know what, on one side you've got tube, you flip it over, you've got epi on the other. So if you specifically look at the Braslow tape and you want to translate the tape, couple things that come into play because all of the information in most cases is there. The key is you have to know what it's called and where to find it. So case in point, if you're trying to figure out what you and I would most commonly describe as giving a fluid bolus, for reasons unbeknownst to me, on the Braslow tape, it's described as volume expansion crystalloid. With a little NS or LR, meaning saline or lactate and ringers, next to it. It's there, you just gotta know what it's called. When it comes to what size tube, that one's easy, it's called ET tube. If you're trying to figure out where to tape the darn thing, it's called ET insertion length. 
suction catheter is easy because it's called a suction catheter. And because of copyright, they couldn't call a Foley a Foley. So they call it a urinary catheter. Again, most things are there. You just have to know what they're called. And in a pinch, where to find them. So what's important about the Braslow tape, though, is in 2017, they released the most updated version. And why that's important is that there's absolutely nothing wrong with the previous versions. It's just the newer one is better. And several changes were made, but the most important thing for what you and I do every day is on the newer versions of the tape. As you see, is next to every drug that's on the tape, it not only says milligrams, meaning how much is the dose, but more importantly, with the new tape, in parentheses, next to each drug, it also now puts in parentheses how many cc's or milliliters you have to push. And that's a huge, really nice addition. Because now it not only says how much did you give, meaning when you type up your chart, but more importantly, in real time, you can look down and says, I have to give 0.4 cc's. Well, you know what? You probably ought to give 0.4 cc's. So when it comes to both of these systems, the real question that comes into play is simply, do they actually work? And the answer, happily, is yes, for most children. And that's important. Because remember, both of them keep going back to the idea of the height, weight, growth chart. Meaning most kids fit, some kids don't. And if the child obviously doesn't fit, you know what? You hopefully can get away. But if the child is actively trying to die, you know what? It'll get you in the right ballpark until you can get this child up on a scale. But interestingly, if you ask both docs, what is the most common question you get asked about your particular system? And the answer with both docs is simply, what about the fat kids. And interestingly, both of them had exactly the same answer, which is called, get over it. Use your gut and look at the kid. Because if, at first glance, the child is huge, well, when it comes to drugs, if your protocols allow, or if your doc wants to, just bump them up a color. And if you got a scrawny little squirt that obviously doesn't fit, well, you know what, when it comes to drugs, if your protocols allow or if your doc is good with it, just bump them down a color. But for most kids, it'll do a nice job of getting you started. Now, if you want to get fancy and look at the science behind it, what's important to remember is that 99 plus percent of the drugs that you and I give every day to really sick kids are based on what's called ideal body weight. And ideal body weight is a fancy way of saying this is what the child should weigh, not what they actually weigh. So with that in mind, if you're pushing Abby on a kid who's in arrest, it is based on what you should weigh. Most of your fancy going up to the pediatric ICU drips are calculated based on what you should weigh. If you've got a bad burn, Parkland slash Brooks, right, your different burn calculations for fluids are based on what you should weigh. And if a kid cracks both femurs, morphine, fentanyl, ketamine are all based on what you should weigh. That's why Braslow says you measure this long and therefore this is what you should weigh. Or Han Tevi says you're a two-year-old and this is what you should weigh. Actually work is that both of them keep going back for drugs to what you should weigh. Now, take that one step further. What's kind of neat is what places are now doing. First of which, on the pre-hospital side. More and more EMS systems, not only when they write up their report, but when they call the ER with report, they're now including what color the kid is. And from my perspective as a nurse, this is a wicked cool thing to do. And the rationale is that if I'm in the ER getting my butt kicked, chances are we honestly didn't hear probably 90 something percent of what you said over the radio. But if all we caught from the report was near drowning yellow, well, you know what? We can have the yellow stuff waiting when this kid hits the door. 
take that one step further, and that's on the hospital side. The biggest push is when the child hits the door for any reason. That every child, either A, gets measured, or B, gets weighed. And the kid wears an appropriate color wristband, dot on their chart, some way to identify every kid by color. And that way, if at any point the kid gets sick, you can look down, see the kid's a yellow, grab the yellow stuff, and resuscitate the kid. Take that one step further for both systems. They are now color coding everything from burns to Bactrim to biologic warfare agents in kids. Now, if you, though, were to use your crystal ball and look into the very near future at what some places have recently begun to do, but more importantly, if you look as to what probably is the future, a pre-hospital and hospital-based sick kid care going to look like, and that's simply whatever you've got, just click or flip. Because all of the calculations have already been done for you. Now, as we finish this part, though, quick disclaimer, I do not work for either of these two systems. I've just played with them at real life kids on transport. And when it comes to sick kids, especially if you don't do sick kids every day, honestly, as we'll show you, I think this is going to rock your world. So, case in point, when it comes to tubes, think about what we currently do. You've got to intubate a two-year-old. So you're like, I'm on it, because I took PAL two years ago. And two years ago, they made you memorize this fancy formula, like 16 plus the age divided by 4 divided by the amount of social security number. And you do mental math when you're stressed, and you come up with some incredibly stupid number, like 19. When you look through your jump bag or your crash cart, you're happily not going to find a size 19 endotracheal tube, which is a clue you probably didn't do math quite correctly. So your partner checks your math and says, dude, it's probably not a 19. Or you can say, you know what, there's got to be a better way. Better way, option number two, is you just hear we need to intubate this two-year-old who is a yellow. And if all you hear is two-year-old or yellow, you click or flip. And you see that a two-year-old should get a four and a half tube. It's taped at 13 or 14, and they get an 8 or a 10 French Foley. Now, think about meds for just a minute. You want to go ahead and give a child who cracked their femur some fentanyl. Great choice. So you're like, all right, protocol says I give one microkilo of fentanyl. The kid weighs 13 kilos, so 1 times 13, if you do mental math, is hopefully 13. The problem is fentanyl comes 50 mics per cc. So how many cc's is 13 mics? Or you go for option number two, whereas all we hear is, can we please give a two-year-old or a yellow dose of fentanyl? And if all you know is you want to give a two-year-old or a yellow dose of fentanyl, you click or flip. And what you find is it shows that you want to give a quarter cc of fentanyl. And on the electronic app, it also has a little pop-up reminding you that you want to push it slowly over at least a couple of minutes. However, on the critical care side, what made a believer out of me was when it came to drips. Because think about the following situation. You're in the ER, and you have a two-year-old who is septic. The child needs to go to the pediatric ICU, but before transport can get there, the pediatric ICU calls and says they want you to start an epi drip. Problem number one, how in the heck do I mix an epi drip on a two-year-old? Problem number two, once I've mixed it, how in the heck do I give an epi drip to a two-year-old? So you know that there's probably got to be a better way. And better way is we just say that I want to start a two-year-old or a yellow epi drip. And if all you hear is two-year-old or a yellow, you click or flip. And this is what you see. It says you start off with this size bag, you add this much drug, 
you run it on the pump at this many cc's per hour. And it's not that you can't do mental math, it's just simply when a kid is really sick, why do math if you don't need to? My best recommendation though, when it comes to horribly sick kids, is simply this. Because that way, if everybody has therapeutic levels of Valium, it's not so bad. Because you give five to the nurse, five to the medic, five to the RTs, how much to the doc? That's 10, 20, 30, and titrate accordingly from there. But as long as everybody's comfortably mellow, it's all good. 